All right, good evening, everybody. A little after five o'clock here. It looks like we're still waiting for a couple of folks to show up, but uh, I figure we may as well go ahead and get started. And uh, hopefully the other folks will join us in a little bit and we'll be able to uh, get going. So uh, welcome to week number five, if you can believe it. This is already uh, about one third of the way through the course. Um, so I figure it's a, a good place just to make sure that I've checked in and um, made sure that everybody is on track with, with uh, what we've been working on and where we are and if there's any questions. A um, couple of uh, quick things. Uh, first of all, I brought up last week the issue of my email address, and I did put right at the top of the Moodle um, a quick link that will take you right to uh, an email to me. Um, so if you're looking to email me, uh, just a reminder that the email address that ended up in the class syllabus was uh, incorrect email. So that email is now there, um, and all you have to do is click on it, and it should open up right in your uh, mail program and put my address in there and everything, and you should be all good to go. Um, also, I just wanted to point out really quickly for those of you who uh, either weren't in the class last week, or are going, we're going back and, and looking at the videos from last week. Um, I did end up with some sort of a small technical issue. The third video of the evening, something happened in the middle of the video um, where I was dem uh, demonstrating some of the graphic design websites. And uh, the QuickTime was not letting me export the video because there was some error in it. So I had to chop off the last, oh, it was probably five or 10 minutes of that video. Um, in order to get it to, to export. So the if you're looking to go back through those graphic design websites, the links are still there. Um, I just won't have the last uh, little bit of the video from that. Um, but other than that, um, we're just going to keep moving ahead tonight. Um, tonight, in some ways, is going to be kind of uh, similar to last week. Uh, in terms of the overall structure of the evening. Um, our topic is going to be different. Last week we were looking at graphic design and the gestalt principles of design. Um, this week is about uh, moving pictures, about movies and animation. Um, so we're going to be looking again at, at uh, a little article that points out some good guidelines for instructional video in particular, uh, not if you're trying to uh, win a, an award for a Hollywood movie, but um, for instructional videos. So we'll be taking a look at that article and doing some discussion of it. Um, then our activity for the evening, our small group activity, is going to revolve around analyzing some instructional videos. Um, I've pulled some examples from the web. And you guys are going to be working in small groups to look at those videos, analyze them, critique them, make some, some suggestions if you need to about how you might have improved them. And running alongside that, we are going to be using the Moodle uh, wiki activity in order to complete that. Um, the reason behind that is that over the course of these weeks, what I'm trying to do is to allow us to use most of the activities that are available through Moodle so that you get a firsthand experience with, with how they work and what they do well and what they maybe don't do well. So that as you're working on your own Moodles, you've got a little bit clearer sense of what works and what doesn't and what you might want to include in your wiki in your uh, Moodles. So tonight will be the wiki activity. And that will be how you will be your groups will be posting your feedback on the videos. Um, and then I'm going to finish up the class uh, again by pointing out a couple of online resources that relate to making videos and making animation um, that you can check out or make use of if you're looking to create content for your Moodles. And then we'll talk about the homework for next week and uh, go on from there. So that is the outline for this evening. Um, before we go any further, though, I want to just check in and see if anyone has questions from last week's class, from uh, the work you were doing, if you were trying to work on some graphic uh, content for your oh. Moodles. Um, so what, uh, what do folks have in terms of 
questions at the moment or things? Um, yeah, Sandy. Um, I was actually wondering, is it a big deal if we change our minds about what we're going to put in this Moodle? It kind of veers from um, what we put in our ID plan. Uh, in terms of the subject or in terms of sort of specifics of content and so on? Um, well, the sections. I changed two of the sections. Um, that that should be fine. What I would say is if, if you make changes that um, are from what you from something that you put in the instructional design plan, then just update the instructional design plan. Um, okay. What we'll be doing uh, probably as a result coming out of next week is starting to pull together um, the different pieces of the instructional design and starting to bring that into one document. So at that point, if there's anything that that is changed from your original document, you can just update it at that point so that uh, so that the document reflects what you've actually done. Okay, I was wondering how to do that because I know that we had put it into um, the it was Moodle, in, but I didn't know how to get in there. Yeah, it was in it, it was in a forum post. So right. yeah, I would say at, at, the, at the point where we where we move those answers into us into a self-contained document that's going to eventually go on our Moodles, then just go through and update if there's anything that's no longer accurate. Okay, thanks. No problem. What else we got? Uh, let's see who, let's see, uh, Tom, yes. I just have a question. I'm wondering your opinion on how important knowing how to make the infographics, the instructional design um, is, how important that is when there is a lot of instructional graphics that are valuable and you don't have to pay for them, they're not copyrighted, people have done them already, and they, they're, look, they're exactly what you're looking for. Instead of paying and spending hours on creating in um, one of these graphic design programs, is it worth it, in your opinion, to do that, to spend a couple hours and, instead of using that time to maybe um, think about other things you could add to your lesson when there's already instructional graphics out there? I think that's my only question. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I, you know, from a, for myself, I would say that the line would be crossed, especially with something like graphic design, is just making sure that if you're if you're a pulling somebody else's content um like you said you want to make sure that that you have permissions to use it if it's if it's you know open source or something like that but then also just you know make sure that you really do agree with the design that it fits in um with other materials that you're presenting uh, it kind of goes back to to some of the principles we were talking about last week of making sure that you know, within a given design, you want elements to agree with each other. But as you're sort of looking at a, at a Moodle, a Moodle is kind of a, you know, an extended design. So just making sure that, you know, obviously, if you're pulling from different sources, the content's not going to design wise look exactly the same. But um, if you if you can at least try to get that material to um, to be similar enough that 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 it's going to look like it's all on purpose and it all belongs together. Um, if that, does that answer your question? Yeah, that works. I was just, you know, I spent a lot of time on, on doing the graphic. I'm like, wow, this looks way worse than, uh, <laughs> than what I just Google and look, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of available. Sure. Yeah. And it, and obviously it's going to depend on your topic and so on. There's going to, and for some topics, there's going to be a lot of material available already and others, you're really not going to have any choice but to, to create your own. Um, but yeah, if there's, you know, if there is things out there that you can use and you feel like they fit in close enough to your, the, the design of your, of your Moodle, um, and as long as you're, you're giving credit for, you know, where they were sourced from or so on, then, um, then that's fine too. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. You are welcome. All right, anyone else? Questions, comments, concerns, criticisms?
Actually, I have just one more comment. <laughs> yes, please. Um, about the forums, I I really don't like the fact that you can't go back later on and switch things. That drives me crazy. <laughs> in, in terms of re of editing a post you've made. Yes, like or deleting something. You know, you only get a half an hour, and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll put it on there, and then I rethink it, and I go, oh, and I go back on there and can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, that is there there are in there are some forum software types of things where you can go back and you're allowed to re-edit a post once you've made it. Um about the best we can do with the with the Moodle if you've got a, a major correction to make or something is obviously you can always post a reply to your own post that that makes the correction. Yeah, that's what so. I actually ended up doing. Yeah, so in that case, you're treating it more like a conversation where you're saying, oh, yeah, I originally said this, but what I really meant to do was this, or I really do know how to spell the word, you know, tenacious or something. Right. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yep, no problem. All right. Uh, anyone else? Anything else? Again, I encourage anyone to be in touch with me. Um, I appreciate, you know, those of you that have been using the the Remind to get in touch with me about questions. Um, I do try to check in at least every day or maybe at most every other day on the forum that I leave at the bottom of each week's um, Moodle. If you've got questions, concerns you want to post there. And like I said, the email is also always available um, if you need to get in touch with me. Um, but hopefully at this point, you're starting to feel pretty comfortable with, with Moodle as a platform um, in terms of how to control it in terms of the overall design and structure. And as I said, these last week and the next few weeks are going to be about really looking at the content that goes into that Moodle. Um, this week is video. Next week, we're going to take a look at audio. And then the last week before the spring break week, we're going to look at um, some Web 2.0 integration uh, and so on. Um, so that's sort of where we are. Professor oh. Miller, I have a question. Yes, Melissa. I wanted to do some pre-training and do some like pre-assessment on vocabulary. And so I was going to put a quiz in there. And I really couldn't, like, it, it wasn't what I thought it could be. Gotcha. So, like, sh would you just Google how to do it and, like, do self-talk kind of a thing and then try to put it in based upon what it said? Are all versions the same when you go to Google it, how to do it? Um, the, there should be, there should be online resources through Moodle's help sites for quiz. Um, we are going to be taking a look the, the two weeks right after we come back from the from central spring break we are going to be looking at assessment so we're definitely going to take a closer look at the the moodle assessment functions at that time um okay. so so we will get it in class as well so if if you want to do a little exploration on your own um in the meantime that's fine but but we will get to the the quiz activity at a certain point um, and I'll also be talking about some other resources that you can use uh, to provide assessment tools through the Moodles. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. All right, well, um, let us get into tonight's content then. Um, so da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was just taking a look at the, the chat there. Um, yeah, that's the idea of typing something up in, in Word or something like that. That's a very common thing to do um, because uh, a, a lot of the online services will time out at a certain point. I know, for example, the assessment software, or the evaluation software that our school district uses um, will time out if, if, if you're sitting there for too long on a page. So they always suggest, you know, type up what you're going to do in a separate uh, program and then copy and paste that in. So, yeah, that can be a an option, too. But, yeah, Sandy, like you said, it's <laughs> if you then change your mind after the post, unfortunately, at least with the, the Moodle forum, there's not much we can do other than to tag on a second post with it. All right. So um, on to video. Um, 
video from one perspective is obviously just like, uh, yeah, <laughs> just like um, there's a lot of similarities with what we were talking about last week with graphic design. Um, video is essentially a, you know, a visual medium. Um, the only difference is, is that it is also temporal. It also runs in time. Um, so there is a time element involved with videos uh, that you don't generally have with um, graphics. One of the nice things about a graphic is that a person can uh, take a look at the graphic for as long as they need to. They can explore it. They can move around on it. They can zoom in on it, um, and it and it stays. Um, some of the challenges with video, uh, as we're going to see, come from the fact that it that it's constantly moving. That it that uh, aside from hitting pause or rewind, it doesn't give you the same um, the same impact that a graphic design would. But on the other hand, it also can provide certain things that still images uh, can't. So that's part of what we're going to be looking for tonight is why would you, if you're doing something visual, what would make you choose a graphic design over a video or a video over a graphic design? Um, so we'll kind of keep that tucked in the back of our minds. So what I would like to do tonight is start off with um, an article that I have posted. Um, under this week, do, do, do. let me get this closed up. Here we go. Um, so there's an article, and this, uh, you know, again, I I pulled this from a from a web resource. I thought it was a pretty good summary of some of the things to be thinking about with educational videos in particular. Um, again, this is not so much about making uh, artistic movies as it is about instructional movies, so it does have a, per a very particular focus. So um, what I thought we could do was start by just giving everyone a little bit of time to read through the article. It's not that long. It's a few pages long. Um, and then we'll come back together and in the wiki assignment, so I will also give you a, a little bit of a preview of what it's like to be working in the wiki, um, we will come back and kind of debrief about the article, see what you got out of it, and maybe try to come up with some, some specific strategies for things that you could do to achieve some of the things that the article points out. So uh, let's see, it is by my watch 520. Um, why don't I give everyone until 530 just to read through the article and maybe jot down some notes or some thoughts about it. Um, when you come back, just so that I can kind of see and, and if it looks like everybody's back uh, early, we can get back on track. Uh, but when you come back, if you have the ability to, to raise your hand, just put your hand up. Um, if you don't have the ability to raise your hand, then just put the word hand or back or something like that in the chat. And when it looks like we've got folks back, then we will uh, discuss the article. All right. So take about 10 minutes, read Creating Effective Educational Videos, and I will see everyone back here 530, hopefully at the latest. All right. Enjoy the article. <laughs> 